All right, so this is part three of the whole series now where we're talking about um, what happens after you're done with that recording, you know, with the interview and you're done with the recording of it. So here's what you end up with. So we in Camtasia, we're showing Camtasia for Macintosh here, but everything that I'm doing here, you can also do in Camtasia Studio, ver I should say version 8.1 and above. And if you're using, using ScreenFlow, you can do this all in ScreenFlow for Macintosh as well. Okay, so here's what we have here. When you're done with the recording, typically you're going to get a couple of tracks down here. So you're going to end up with two tracks down here. This first one here, notice that when I select it, see these handles that show up around the object on the, on the, in the canvas viewer here? Okay, so that's basically the media clip that goes with this clip down here in the in the timeline and notice that that's going to be the video and the audio that got recorded with that video and remember if you recall what we had done there in the setup that we did was it was this secondary camera that came from the display and we used the microphone that came from the Yeti microphone for that one okay so that's both embedded in this video clip here. And then when I click this guy here, notice where the handles show up. So I click this, the handles now show up around this big piece, which is going to be this other one that happens to be the, uh, everything that got recorded on the computer, which included that Skype interview with Jennifer. And also, if I move this guy over, it also captured this other view of me uh, face on. And so this is what Jennifer was seeing of me when, I was, uh, when we were face on. So that came from this webcam on this computer, okay? And then this one happened to come from the webcam that was on this computer. But again, as I showed you in the first video, you could easily use something like this as well, like a Logitech C920 or a Logitech C930, okay? All right, so that's basically what you're looking at there. And then the only thing I would say is you can now, now use some of the techniques that I show you in my courses on how to use the animations and basically spin these guys around. So here we can do the rotation of 180 degrees. If you want to take, oops, take this, spin that little video around 180 degrees, maybe scale it up a little bit, okay, uh, proportionally, and then perhaps even crop this in just a little bit so there, so we're getting uh, rid of some of the headroom there and maybe some of the lower angles. Again, I show all of this on how to do these things in my, uh, in my courses. Basically, you can then set that up any way you want. Now, here's the other thing is maybe I don't want all of this white space around all over here. So what I can do here is take this by the same token, use the cropping functions in the screencasting editor that you're using. And again, you'll have this in Camtasia Studio version 8.1 and ScreenFlow for Macintosh has the same feature as well. And we're using obviously Camtasia for Macintosh here. So I can go ahead and include that here. So I'm just scaling that in a little bit, all right? And it would be your choice on whether or not to include this little video of you looking at your, uh, your subject. For my part, I'm not going to do that because ultimately when I publish my video, it's really for the benefit of my audience. The only reason I kept this video here when I was doing the interview was for the benefit of my interviewee. That has already served its purpose as far as I'm concerned, so I don't need to include that for my audience because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm producing this for my audience. So I might slide that up over here, slide me up over here, and maybe scale, do the same cropping here and maybe get rid of some of the headroom from Jennifer, get rid of the apple that's over on the left here, so uh, let's not show her lunch here. So bring that in a little bit, and then now let's make it proportional and bring that in just a little bit. Okay, so now maybe I want to, actually I don't like the, the sizes of these, I like to have them the same proportions of my video and her video. So I'm going to scale this out a little bit here, but notice the different size. So let me do this, I'm going to overlay hers on top of mine, and we'll use that as sort of a guide on how to bring mine in here. Okay, so now mine's going to come in just a little bit. There, perfect. So there's Jennifer, there's me, okay? Uh, but I'm looking the wrong way. So what we can do now is take the Y rotation on that, spin it around so I'm looking at her uh, as I'm doing this. But again, this is the sort of the view from my audience, okay? Now I don't like this black background, it's a little bit cheesy. Again, you can do the same thing. Uh, there's a feature in Camtasia Studio and also a similar feature in ScreenFlow for Macintosh where you can change the color of that background. In Camtasia for Macintosh, you can right click and then choose Adjust Canvas where then you have some different options here. And one of the options is to change the color. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bluish there, that's fine, and we'll go ahead and apply that. So now we have this 
sort of blue background here, you can make it white or whatever. Pro tip, you can actually also make this an image background. So if you want to brand your logo or have your website, like in the lower right hand corner, you can easily do that as sort of watermark, kind of create a custom background. But what you would do then is uh, an image uh, that kind of sits underneath all of this. Again, I teach all of that stuff in my course. So the other thing I'd like to do is maybe have a little bit of separation between these and the background. And so now what I can do is maybe even add a little bit of a, a drop shadow on her video and a drop shadow on mine. So now we have a little bit of, you know, kind of a lifting it off of the background just a little bit. Obviously, all of this other stuff that I'm showing you now with the, with the shadowing and the cropping, this is all... Um, little tips and tricks, but this is where you get into editing your, uh, your presentation or your interview for your audience members. So there's different, different techniques and different uh, features that you can put on there depending on what you want, you know, how you want to present this to your, to your audience. So for example, it might also be the case that as you guys are talking, maybe you're talking about a book or a website or an artist or something like that and you as you as you're talking as you're doing the editing at the key points you can then bring in media clips and put that down here in the bottom part that shows those things the book or the website or the artist or whatever that you're talking about in the interview you can include those down in here okay uh, but the other thing that you can also do is just real quick is maybe include an annotation that maybe just puts a little bit of information about who it is that we're talking to here. So this happens to be uh, Jennifer Tran. So she was the screen, the um, media specialist at the company that we interviewed, which happened to be at Cario, which is a great uh, software company down in Irvine, California. They're doing some wonderful things with um, with electronic health records. Let's go ahead and do a little formatting here. Okay, so there's that and then just basically copy that and then do the same thing for myself and put in a little lower third some information about me, Mel Claro, and then maybe put a little bit of a transition in there as well. Okay, so these are all little features that you'll learn about in the course. So those are just a few of the tips about how I set up. So in this series, in this three-part series, we talked about the setup of the equipment and the configuration of the preferences and, op and settings and so on in the two pieces of software that, that, we, that I was using. One was Skype, which again is for uh, the communication between me and my interviewee and then the second is your screencasting software whichever one you choose to use and that's for the benefit of your audience here okay the second video we talked about how to then actually do that recording with those settings that we had and then in this third video we talked about how to then edit and kind of polish that up for the benefit of your audience because at the end of the day remember it's all about doing this for your audience and making sure that they're engaged and keeping them apprised of what your presentation is all about. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it for this video. This is Mel with the Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online, web ready. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.